we would have thrown away at least three actual biological cell populations. If you don't do this, you're likely throwing away cells. In this video, we're going to cover a very important topic, which is iterative pre-processing. So instead of just doing all your pre-processing and calling it a day, we're actually going to do a round of pre-processing without getting rid of any cells and then determining from there if they're actually outliers. That way, we're not actually throwing away any cells. So we're going to go through this very quickly um, because I've gone through a lot of this before. We're going to load in some modules, silence some warnings. This data is mouse lung data. We have five different samples. I already have the samples as H5ADs, so I'm just going to load those in. And we have our five samples ranging from 8,000 to 12,000 cells. We're going to annotate different QC variables like the mitochondrial percent and all the other typical QC variables. Instead of filtering, this time we're going to do annotation. So we're going to label all the cells. I've talked about this mad outlier business before, but instead of getting rid of them, we're making a new column in the observation data frame. That's just true or false, whether it's an outlier or not. We are getting rid of, in this case, mitochondrial counts that are above 25%. So we're going to pass it through that. And we basically have the same number of cells. And then we're going to use two different doublet detection methods just because I find that doublet detection methods actually vary a lot. So I like to confirm the results with two different methods at least. So this will take probably a minute or two per sample. OK, now that we have the doublets annotated but not removed, we're actually going to integrate data. And in this case, I'm just adding the sample name to the barcodes just so we can differentiate them. I'm combining the data into one a data object. And then we're just doing typical normalization, transformation. We're saving the raw data because we'll need to use that later, getting the highly variable genes, scaling, and getting the PCA. And then after that, we can run Harmony. OK, now we've created our Harmony embedding, and we're going to use that to calculate the neighborhood graph and then get the UMAP. And then here I'm just making a new column in the observation data frame called doublet. And it's just going to be true or false if it was labeled as a doublet from either of those two methods that I used. And then let's actually look at the outliers here. There should be one main thing that stands out here. Some of these clusters are primarily composed of outliers, and we'll get to that in a second. Doublets. This is more or less what we expect. There are some of these clusters that are primarily doublets, but there are these little ones that, that are pretty typical of doublets. And one of the reasons I picked this data set is because one, I know that it has neutrophils in it, and two, it has a very large dynamic range in the number of genes expressed in some of these cells. We have some of these that only have a few hundred genes, and then we have some a lot actually that are in the range of like four to six thousand. So when we have this large dynamic range that can affect these distribution based methods for determining if something is an outlier because some cells just naturally express fewer genes like neutrophils. So if we look at two of the top neutrophil markers, we see indeed this large population here, which had a lot of outliers in it is likely a neutrophil population. So we would have actually thrown away a lot of those if we just did the automatic filtering during pre-processing. So let's actually compute the latent clusters so we can use those. We're going to focus on these three outlier populations. I'm not going to do all of them, but theoretically you would label all of the cells first before you determine whether any are outliers or not. So we had these three populations. We're going to focus on these three which correspond to cluster 3, 16, 17. Instead of just subjectively looking at a UMAP, we can also plot the proportion of outliers in each of these populations by just plotting the mean of each laden grouping based on that outlier column. And the outlier was true or false, so 0, 1. So if you plot the mean of 0, 1, you get the proportion of 1s, or the proportion of outliers in this case. We have around 80% for 16 to 17, and around 60% outliers for 3. We can do the same thing for doublets. Some of these small populations might actually just be populations of doublets, but again, I think it's better to actually determine that by showing that they have a mixture of markers instead of just getting rid of them. 
So let's actually look at some of these marker genes just to quickly annotate these three populations. I'm kind of taking a shortcut here. I'm not going to label all the populations like you should just for the sake of time. I don't think it's ever good to just label one or, or just a few populations because you have to disprove that it's not another population. Just because it has a marker for one type of cell doesn't mean it's not another type of cell that also expresses that marker. So we're getting the marker data frame. We already saw that three, most likely neutrophils. If we do 16, 16 actually expresses some well-known markers of plasma cells. So 16 looks like a plasma cell population. Cluster 17, the top markers are surfactant proteins. And this is lung data, so these are probably type 2 epithelial cells. All three of these populations would have been thrown away if we didn't do this iterative pre-processing. So how do we keep these and get rid of the actual outliers? Let's just assume we looked at all the cells, we annotated all the cells, and we only determined that these three are actual cell populations, the others were actually outlier. Well, we can get a list of barcodes. In this case, I'm just making a white list of all the barcodes that we want to keep. So is it in cluster 3, 16, 17? And we're just looking at the observation data frame and getting the index, which just corresponds to the barcode. Let's pretend none of the doublets were real cell types. So we're just setting this as a blank list. But what we're doing now is we're saying, OK, is it an outlier? Because outliers were labeled true. But if it is an outlier and it's in that white list, we're going to keep it anyways. And then same for the doublets, but we don't have any in the white list. So we're just getting rid of all the doublets. So we have our A data object, which interestingly ends up being exactly 40,000 cells. And then since we already did the integration and dimension reduction and clustering on the data that contained these outliers and doublets, we're going to reset it to the raw. We're going to resave the raw just because you need that downstream for a lot of things. And then we're going to do the integration again. All right, so we have our integrated data and we're going to use that embedding again for the neighbors you map in Leyden. And then we have our final data. If we didn't do this, we would have thrown away at least three actual biological cell populations. You should always do this because it really doesn't add that much time. You've already annotated all the cells at this point. All you really did was annotate a couple extra populations that might have been doublets or outliers. 